Welcome to lecture number 10 for ECE 376 Embedded Systems Keypads. Now, one of the problems you have with microprocessors is how to get data to the microprocessor. A keypad is a nice way to get numbers 0 through 9. With that, I can combine them and input numbers up to 9999. I can use it to input a number until at the time of a clock and say it run for 43.66 seconds. I can input the number for the frequency, for frequency generator. Um, define the speed of a motor, input numbers for calculator, all stuff like that. It's just a nice, easy way to input numbers to a microprocessor rather than just push buttons. Um, it's also a binary device, so it's easy to interface with PIC processor. The one in your kit is a membrane uh, keypad. This guy right here, if you take one of the seven pin headers, like you use for your LCD display, insert it out on one side, the other one will insert right into port C on your PIC board. Um, that's kind of similar to the one I'll be using in this demonstration. Now the schematics for a keypad are as follows. The one we're using is a membrane keypad. It's $1.33 from eBay. It has seven pins, arranged as three rows and four columns. Now what happens is when I push a button, like push 1, uh, the first column is shorted to the first row. If I push uh, button 5, the second column is shorted to the second row. So just open or short. The problem is you have to convert that to a binary signal, 0 volt, 5 volt, so the PIC can see it. One way to do that is take all the rows, make them inputs, and time to ground through 100k resistor. You actually don't have to do anything to have to do anything th uh, there. The PIC board has 100k resistors to ground soldered for all the I/O pins, so this is done for you automatically. Uh, the rows I'm going to make, or the columns going to make output. So I'm going to output zero volts, five volts. If I output five volts, zero volts, zero volts, I'm scanning column one. If I then hit button number one, RC6 will be five volts. The other ones will be zero. If I hit button number four. RC5 is 5 volts. So that's how you detect the different buttons. I output a 100 to check the first column, 010 to check the second column, 001 to check the third column, and then check, are any of the rows equal to 1? A um, couple of routines to do that. This is, again, this is kind of a bottom-up programming. Yeah, let's put that there. Uh, what I want to do is, at the lowest level, just find out what key is pushed. So what this routine does is it's going to have the default is FF. If no key is pushed, that's what get, gets returned. I'll then check. Check the first column. Port C equals 4, outputs a 100. Checking the first column. If RC6 is high, I push key number 1. If RC5 is high, I push key number 4, and so on. I'll then check the second column. And then check the third column. This for loop right here slows it down. It takes a little bit of time for the voltage to settle. Counting to 100 in C is one way to kill time. That burns about 100 microseconds. When I'm done, uh, whatever's in result gets returned, and that's the key that I pushed. Okay, so anytime you're at a program, it's good to check it. So here what I'm going to do is to check the get key routine. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to count to 100,000 as long integers. Then in the main routine, the check code is I'm just going to call get key, display whatever comes back, and repeat. So what that does goes downloading the code. You can sit there and watch it run. I'm checking column three, two, or column two, one, zero, two, one, zero. I'm checking the different columns. I'm going to hold down the 1 button. Notice RC6 blinks when RC2 is on. That's when I check column 1, row 1 is lit up. If I hit the 4 button, now the pin 5 lights up when column 2 is being checked. That turns on. If I hold down the 2 button, then the first row, second column turns on. And on the LCD display, I can see that that is the 2. This is a 1. I press no key, it returns 255. That kind of checks the code. Go back and take those out, and I have a much more responsive system. So here I'm pressing key 2, 
releasing, key 5, key 9. So it looks like the keypad is working, or the get key routine is working. Uh, next, the problem with get key is I'm getting the same key over and over again. So if I hold down the 2 button, I get 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. To just get a single reading, when I hit the key, I just want to get a single number. I can do the following. I'm going to wait until I hit a key. Again, 255 is what is returned when I'm not putting it, hitting a key. So this is stuck in the blue loop until I hit a key. Uh, once I hit a key, it records X. And now I'm going to sit there and wait until I release the key. That's the routine read key. To check that one, I'll write a little short test program. This right here. I'm going to read key, compile, and notice when I compile, I have 3,800 bytes of memory. This is 1,900 instructions of in RAM, or assembly instructions. Again, a lot more than I really want to write. That's part of the power of C. I can write fairly large programs in assembly without that many lines of C, and the code is actually, actually somewhat understandable. Uh, download that code, and now what it should do is it waits for me to hit a button, and then returns that button. All right, hit a button, release, then returns. So right now it's waiting for me to hit a button, then release. So push the two, release. That was a three. Let's try it again. Two, release. That was the number two. Six, release. Six, four, release. Eight release. So that routine's working. So now that I can read a single push button, uh, let's read a number up to like 999. One way to do that is I'm going to wait until I hit a button, then release it. Stir that in temp. If it was the number 0 through 9, I'll say that the value is the old value times 10 plus 1. So when I put the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 is 1. Hit the 2, 1 times 10 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 1, 2 is 12. Hit the 3. 12 times 10 is 120, plus 3 is 123. 1, 2, 3 is 123. That reads in the button. I'm also going to interpret a couple keys. The star button, I'll treat as a push. If I hit the star button, again, way up here, uh, the star is right here. Um, the pound sign is returned as 11. And also going to read the push buttons and give you 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Those are the different commands you can do. If I hit the start button, that's a push. Um, and I'll have a stack, like an HP calculator. X goes to Y, Y goes to Z, Z goes to T, and X starts at 0. And if I hit the pound button, divided by 11, so 123 divided by 10 is, one, is 12. This is integer math. Compile. Compile and download. Here's the result from compiling. Now let's download that program. So now when I hit a number like 1, okay, the first one is a 3. Let's hit the pound sign to clear that out. Hit a 1. Uh, Subreason always returns a 3 first time you run it. Not really sure why that is. Then a 2. 1 times 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 times 10 plus 3 is 123. And put the number 123. Star is a push. X goes to Y. I can now do 4, 5, 6. Push seven eight nine. I changed my mind. One two seven seven seven. Pound pound. Delete that seven seven. I can now input numbers onto it. Uh, that's what a keypad does for you. It lets you input numbers, and it's up to you to figure out what to do with the numbers. I can now have the different buttons, such as have these guys say, "Let's do a timer." Let's control how bright an LED is. Drop a stepper motor. This lets you input a number. 
and it's really up to you what you do with it. I'd like to give a couple examples of some things you can do with a keypad. First, let's have it input a time. I'm going to input a number like 123 and then hit the star button. It's going to then interpret that as soon as I hit the star button. I want to run for 12.3 seconds. When I get to zero, red light turns on. You could use that for watering a plant. Um, I'll turn on a motor for 12.3 seconds. That plant's watered. Go on to the next one. I could use that for how long you have to answer a question for a quiz game show. You know, stuff like that. This is all the same that we had before. I'll just read a number. If it's number 0 through 9, interpret that as a number times 10 plus the digit. If it's equal to 10, if I hit the star button, that's going to be time. I'll now go into this loop. I'll set a flag called run equal to 1. Then as long as run is 1, I'm going to keep on displaying. This is the current time, decrement it every 0.1 second. So it's going to go 12.3 seconds, 12.2 seconds, 12.1 seconds, all the way down. Uh, as soon as I get to 0, Zero is false, anything on zero is true. As soon as this is false or zero, it kicks out. It flashes port A on for one second, then off. So to do that, I can uh, here I previously saved that in a file. Um, it's supposed to be alarm clock. Yep, and there's your timer. Compile that one. And then download. Here's what it does. If I do one, two, three. Okay, let's try that again. And hit the pound. Hit pound. That's stored into time, and it's going to count for 32.3 seconds. And some time went by, so that when I get down to zero, port A turns on for one second, then turns off. That's the program. The third example is you can actually turn your pickboard into a fairly powerful RPN calculator. This uses RPN logic, reverse Polish notation, that HPs use. Uh, my personal opinion is the HPs beat the snot out of the TI calculators and other types. They're also a whole lot easier to program. I um, mean, think about it. Suppose I want to do the function 1 plus 2 times 3. If I do a TI 1 plus 2 times 3 equals, I have to sit there and wait to see the equals, then parse what I typed in, figure out the order of operation. That's actually really hard. The way the HPs work is they have a stack. Uh, just like we did before, I can input two numbers on the stack. When I hit plus, it adds these two numbers together. If I hit minus, it subtracts x from y. Divide, numerator of denominator, multiply, numerator times denominator. So I first have to set up the two numbers, then do the operation. It's a little confusing to get used to, but once you do, it's actually really makes a lot of sense, really, really fast, easy to program. What I can do is add a couple other functions like RB0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Give the scan code 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I can now have some functions, such as if I hit RB0, I'll subtract. Uh, that'd be, if I see 12, I'm going to subtract. 13 I'll add, 14 divide, 15 multiply, 16 clear. If you really wanted to, I could do sine, cosine, arctangent, you know, whatever you want. The way the code looks like is same as before. If I see a 10, that's a push command. I'm going to take the data, push it on the stack, just like before. 11 is an undo. You know, made a mistake. I don't want to do 323. Three, I want to do 123. Delete the last digit. Subtract. X becomes Y minus X, and pop. Z goes back down to Y. T goes back down to Z. On add, X becomes X plus Y. Z pops into Y. T goes into Z. Take this code, compile it. And that compiles into 4,148 bytes, or 2,074 lines of assembly. It only takes 2,000 lines of assembly to program an, an HP calculator. Um, they actually do more. I haven't done sines, cosine, arctangent, hyperbolics, stuff like that. But just a basic calculator only takes 2,000 bytes. To illustrate how that works, I can now let's take, let's do 12 plus 13. I'll take 1 
two. Push that on the stack. That's a star. Turn that again. Add a recompile, redownload the code. Let's do one. And I got that three again. Pound to clear it out. One, two. Push. Three, four. I now have X and Y on the stack. I can now add. RB1 is add. 12 plus 34 is 46. Let's push that on the stack. And now let's subtract 17. 1, 7. 46 minus 17 is 29. Let's multiply that by 3. Push. 3. And multiplies right here. 87. To illustrate that, let's do 6 plus 7 times 8 plus 9 divided by 2 plus 3. And I should get 44.2, or integer math, 44. Uh, trying that, I want to do 6 plus 7. So let's hit clear. That was this button right here. Let's do 6, enter, 7. 6 and 7 are on the stack. I'll add those together. Push that on the stack. I now want to do 8 plus 9. 8. Push that on the stack. 9. I can now add those two together. And notice the previous answer was on the stack above it. I can now multiply 13 times 17 and get 221. Uh, divided by 2 plus 3. So I'll push that on the stack. Take the number 2. Push that on the stack. Number 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 221 divided by 5 is 44. So there you have an RPN calculator. Only takes 2K program memory. That's some of the things you can do with a keypad. It's just a convenient way to input numbers into your pickboard. That's lecture number 10 for ECE 376 keypads.